Hi again, and welcome to How to Be Miserable, videos on psychology and self-care. Today I'm going to teach you how to write your autobiography, and it'll only take you 10 minutes. Obviously there's a catch. But first, consider subscribing for more posts on personal development, mental health, and communication. Now, in a previous post, I discussed something called a point form autobiography. You write all the years of your life into a notebook, leaving space under each one, and then you write in significant events under each year. And you don't have to work in sequence. You can say, okay, weddings. Let's write in all the significant weddings. Oh, births. Oh, deaths. Oh, divorces. Oh, graduations, rejections, accidents, injuries, moves, career milestones, periods of anxiety or sadness, meeting significant friends for the first time, trips, you name it. And as you do this, at first, it feels like just a bunch of random events. Then you begin noticing things. That time when you were so anxious just seemed completely out of the blue. But then you see that there were three family deaths in the previous year, plus financial stress, plus you'd broken your leg and couldn't exercise. And some of it begins to make sense. If you keep at it, you can get a sense of the overall shape of your life. Some forms of therapy are all about looking at your life from a long perspective, taking a step back and really seeing your life. And what seems like a random series of trivial events can begin to take form. You can see patterns and shapes in your life, and that can help illuminate the situation you find yourself in now. And you can do much of this work yourself outside therapy, though an external observer can help point out bits that are missing and changes in your life that seem unexplained and unexplored. The 10-minute autobiography is a great strategy. <clears throat> it comes to us from narrative therapy, an approach to therapy that emphasizes how we understand ourselves, other people, and the world around us, using constructed stories or narratives to make sense of things. Some of the stories we tell ourselves are just flat wrong. I'm the stupidest person in the universe who screws up every task I attempt. Well, even if a lot of things have gone wrong in your life, presumably it's not absolutely everything, and not all of them have been entirely your fault. Other stories may be truthful, as far as they go, but they're not complete. They're too absolute, or too simple, or too one-sided. And the stories we tell ourselves influence how we see the world. If we think our life is the story of a loser, for example, we'll automatically look for signs that that's true, and we'll ignore bits of our life that just don't fit that narrative. Anyway, how do you understand an entire life with all its detail? Well, how does a painter represent a seagull in the far distance? They don't outline every feather. They look for the essential bits. In some cases, it might just be a pair of arced lines. We look for the big structure. And that's what the 10-minute autobiography does. If you were really going to write a 400-page book of your life, you'd have to break it up into chapters. And that's what this exercise does. So, how do you write an autobiography in just 10 minutes? You just write the chapter titles. That's it. That's all it is. The trick with this exercise is that it invites you to consider your life as a series of stages, or, well, like a series of movements in a symphony. It asks you, where the joints are in your life, the transitions from one thing to the next. In my own life, one transition was moving from Vancouver to Ontario to attend graduate school. I spent much of my early adulthood there, and then I moved back again. Those are two obvious chapter breaks. Different people have different ones. The start of a relationship, 
new chapter. The end of a relationship, new chapter. Some big realization about yourself, new chapter. So if you do this, I suggest you do it on paper, maybe in a notebook or a journal. Take out your phone, set the timer for 10 minutes, and for that time, focus completely on your task. You don't have to finish in that time, but you want to really sit and think about your life. No television, no emails, no texting, just this. For 10 minutes, that you can do. And you may find you can go longer if you need to. <clears throat> Try to come up with at least eight chapters. And here, I'll write the first one for you. Life before me. That's the one about your family and everything that happened before you were born. Okay, now do the rest. And if you find a great long one in there, 10 years, 15 years, see if it might merit being cut in two. If you find there's one or more that cover a really brief period of time, that's fine. Some of the really formative events in our lives, they don't take a lot of time. That pivotal two-week vacation romance, that project for work, those three months of therapy. Come up with a name for each chapter that reflects the theme of that period. Confronting my mortality, an experience of chemotherapy, or abandoning my past, moving to the city, or turning around and facing my fear, going back to school. It's fine to have more than eight chapters. Maybe you'll have 20 or more. But don't get too fine-grained. We're trying to see the big picture here. Overall themes, main efforts, big changes. If you have a chapter for every day of your life, you're missing the point. Obviously, this whole effort leads you to a certain point, the chapter you're now in. Name it. What's going on? What's the big task of this part of your life? What's the mission? Do you like this chapter? Where are you in it? Are you just at the beginning? Or has it gone on too long? Sometimes we realize that we've been stuck in the same chapter, even though really, it's over. Some young adults, for example, they realize they're still living the life of a teenager even though that period of their life is done. They're trying to keep that chapter going, but there's no more plot. Nothing's going on. The story continues in the next chapter. That's where the action is. It's time to bring this chapter to a close and really start that next one. Sometimes we worry that maybe there isn't another chapter. Maybe we're at the end of the book. This, this one, this was the good part. It's over. Nothing much happens from now on. That can feel really convincing. Most people will have a couple of times in their life when they think, oh, that was it. That was the good part. It's over, done. The rest of the book is pretty boring after this. Or maybe there is no rest of the book. And then there is. If that's the fear, welcome it. It's good to confront that. Some of those young adults, for example, look at the adult lives of their parents and think, oh, yuck, who wants it? Mowing the lawn and watching Jeopardy for the rest of my life. That's a really boring chapter. I don't want to read it, let alone live it. Wonderful. What would you want that next chapter to look like? I looked at my own parents' lives and I thought, no, thank you. So I didn't live those chapters. I made ones of my own that suited me. At some point, this exercise forces you to confront something. You're the author of the book. It's up to you. Chance will play a role, but you have to steer the boat. 
So do something else. Write the name of the next chapter as well. What do you want that next one to be about? Where do you want the story of your life to go? Okay, what are you gonna get out of this exercise? Well, here's the really unsatisfying part of this video. I haven't the slightest idea. Could be nothing. What have you lost? 10 minutes. I watched Interstellar. It cost me almost three hours. So, hey, 10 minutes, whatever. But most people will get something. You'll see a pattern in your life. Maybe one you like. Maybe one you want to change. Or you'll see more clearly the mission of the moment. You know, or you'll see where you want to steer next. I realized that although I wanted to live on a very different stage than the one that my parents occupied, I wanted my base to be in Vancouver, right where I'd started. I moved home to within four kilometers of where I was born. But that, for me, was not going backwards. It would have been for some people. But for me, it was the next step forwards. Maybe you'll realize you're stretching a chapter out beyond its natural length. This bit is done. Time for what comes next. Maybe you'll realize that you've been living out an old script. This is what every member of your family has done, so that's what you've been doing. Or maybe you saw yourself as not very capable, so you've lived your life as though that was true. Maybe an old story has been influencing your choices and not in the best way. Maybe it's time to change the story. It's hard to know what you'll find out, really. Chances are it'll be something, and you'll want to save that table of contents. You might be surprised how valuable it can be in thinking about your life and where you want it to go. Thanks for watching, and do consider subscribing if you want to see more like this.